Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, I work for a large media organization, and the uh, public uh, expects us to respond in a large way to uh, major events. Uh, and I just want to focus on one case study and uh, the way uh, GMA News has, you know, the various ways GMA News has used uh, social media to respond to the Habagat floods. Uh, and prior to that, the uh, Typhoon Hiner and then the class suspensions. Um, basically, we discovered that social networking sites has given us a multiplier effect. Uh, as a large media organization, uh, we've always had a fairly large impact on uh, the media environment, but uh, social media has, has multiplied that even more. Well, uh, one of the main ways that uh, we're exploiting the social networking sites is uh, basically where it enables people to send us stuff. Uh, send us news, send us uh, crowdsourced photos. Um, <clears throat> you know, the traditional uh, news gathering method was that uh, on, in something like this, you send a crew to a breaking event, and by the time they get there, it's over. Uh, these days, uh, you know, we get these photographs uh, almost in real time. Uh, but that creates another challenge, which is uh, vetting all this content, verifying it, making sure it's original. And, uh, you know, we develop a protocol for verification, uh, and um, we refine this uh, uh, after learning a few lessons the hard way. Uh, and I think most of us uh, working in media organizations have, have learned some pretty hard lessons in verification and vetting uh, over time. A couple of other uh, examples. Uh, th this is all crowdsourced. We have a, a proprietary tool called Uscoop uh, that uh, it has its own content management system. Uh, but at the same time, we also call uh, st stuff that we get, pictures we get uh, over the over Facebook and Twitter, Uscoop. So Uscoop is basically a our approach to citizen journalism. Again, something like this. Uh, again, this is uh, this happened. Uh, this was taken right after, almost right after it happened. Uh, by the time uh, our crews got to this uh, place in Antipolo, uh, it was like the next day. So that would have been the old way of doing it. Uh, uh, people would be, would have been able would have been able to see uh, this image when it was already fairly old news. Okay, uh, this is not Venice. Uh, this is the UST campus. Uh, the day, excuse me, but, uh, the the day before, the day after uh, August seven, the Habagat Habagat flood. I, I think it stayed like that for the next uh, several days. So you know, some UST students uh, were stranded, so they decided to have fun uh, while they were uh, still on campus. Um, so the other the other important way we use. Uh, uh, Twitter, in particular, is uh, we push out content, uh, and not necessarily uh, originally reported content. As you can see, uh, we we retweet uh, Nababa, and I noticed uh, Mahar Lagmai just walked in. Uh, he's uh, kind of the, the guru behind that, and uh, uh, we we tweet uh, we retweet uh, individuals individuals as well. So basically, we we are constantly conscious of this push pull dynamic. We're pulling content in. We're pulling. Uh, crowdsourced photos and information in leads that lead us to news, but at the same time we turn around and push out vetted or verified content. So we will only retweet uh, tweets from people that we trust and we know have a track record for uh, tweeting accurate information. Okay, this is uh, again this is uh, something that um, this is also typical. Uh, we we follow. Uh, you know, newsmakers, organizations, uh, agencies. Somebody mentioned earlier that they wish that uh, government agencies uh, use use social media more, use Twitter more. I'm going to be describing uh, our effort to try to evangelize among uh, government agencies uh, in the next couple of minutes. Okay, th this is always a very popular thing that we post. Just basic weather uh, satellite photos. You know, I find that social media is a very powerful educational tool. Um, uh, when I was first starting in, in media, uh, I always felt that Filipinos were not very literate in, ter in, in looking at uh, scientific material or, or maps. Uh, you know, we like to estimate rather than you know, be precise about uh, information. Uh, social media enables us to share stuff like this, which kind of uh, um, contains precise scientific technical information that we allow people to just figure out on their own coupled with a lot of the other information that we share. 
Okay, some emergency information. Uh, you know, there's this debate. Uh, there was this debate. Uh, the debate's over between whether uh, social media should be breaking news ahead of our website, ahead of TV, even ahead of radio. Um, uh, that debate's over uh, because uh, I think everyone's agreed that we can break uh, our news on uh, Twitter and Facebook because we, if we don't, uh, everyone else will beat us to the story. Uh, except for enterprise or investigative pieces that we know are exclusive to us, but almost everything else, the death of Dolphy, the appointment of Sereno, uh, the crash of Robredo, I mean, we don't wait for TV for that. So, uh, of course, the TV people uh, at first were quite upset, you know, um, and you don't want to upset the TV people because they're, they're the golden goose of our company. Uh, but uh, they re they've seen the writing on the wall and, uh, <clears throat> and the future is really this form, at least for now. Okay, the other function that we, we use uh, social media for is we bridge people and authorities. So it's not just news uh, uh, or crowdsource content that we share. It's just, just basic information, like the Twitter accounts of, of people who, who uh, have influence uh, over particular events. Okay, next, please. This is one of our most powerful <laughs> or most uh, viral pieces of information that we share. I mean, something this simple so many people shared. And then I noticed that I, you know, I go to somebody's house, they actually printed it out and, and uh, put a magnet on it on their refrigerators. Uh, just, just to have, I mean, something, I mean, this is not even original to us. We didn't even gather it on our own. We picked it up from somewhere. Again, there's attribution somewhere here. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's just basically uh, collaborating with somebody else who collected this information. All we did was provide a platform uh, so it can be shared on a wide scale. Okay, uh, this is something that's kind of dear to our heart because um, we started doing this in uh, uh, when Ondoy happened and then when there was a tsunami in Japan and many Filipinos were missing for a while and they were contacting um, us, not just the web, but they were contact t contacting TV and radio about people that they couldn't contact uh, uh, or people that they knew needed uh, rescue. So we were uh, uh, first posting this on on uh, social media, on Facebook in particular. So we had like an, a running updated list of uh, people needing uh, emergency assistance. Um, and then uh, we realized that all of this needed to be collated and organized. Uh, next, please. Okay, there's another execution. Uh, basically, this is the list of people who needed rescue and assistance. We collated this into a database in the next slide. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So yeah, next slide, next one. Okay, so this is uh, a basically a Google Doc uh, that uh, is available in the public domain. Uh, everyone has uh, read-only access uh, to it. Uh, of course, we have edit access to it. But basically, what it does is it contains all the information I think rescue authorities need to try to rescue somebody. Okay, and so uh, so that we don't waste rescue authorities' time, we have people. Uh, we have staff who are calling up these people and, and, and occasionally asking them how they're doing. And so we put their uh, status update here. Some of, them, some, of, some of the updates say that they've been rescued, they're now okay. So rescue authorities can look here and you know, figure out who still needs to be rescued. Now I realize that there are others who are doing the same thing. Um, uh, I think Tonya's group uh, was doing this and I think the NDR the government, uh, the NDRRMC was using this. So we uh, shared this with, with the NDRRMC and with Tonya's group. And I think this eventually became a subset of their larger uh, database. We had still had to maintain our own because people were constantly calling us, texting us, since we are a fairly large organization uh, with this kind of information. So we had to maintain our own database, but this was instantly shared uh, with uh, the NDRRMC, which eventually put up their own database. Okay, I just want to uh, briefly discuss uh, our, our effort at Walang Pasok. Okay, um, as, as you probably know, uh, or as many of you uh, know, the, the uh, DepEd uh, uh, transferred the authority to cancel classes to the DILG. And uh, in private conversations with the DILG, they were, you know, these local officials were saying, were kind of upset by that because they were not warned. But basically what happened was during the Habagat floods when... Uh, there were so many class suspensions uh, all over Luzon. Uh, there was basically chaos. There was a lot of chaos. Uh, 
uh, and people were asking us, may pasok pa dito sa Binyan, sa San Pedro, sa Antipolo, etc., etc. And, and uh, if we had not gotten a call or a text message from you know, the local official, then we would have no way of responding. So we thought, well, why don't, why don't they just all open Twitter accounts and use Twitter and use you know, the walang pasok uh, hashtag? Okay, so we went through, uh, oh, next slide, please. Okay, so we started using the hashtag uh, just to uh, kind of introduce the introduce the, uh, the the concept and hope that others would catch on. Uh, but we realized not enough not enough people were catching on, not enough local government units were catching on. Uh, so uh, next, so we started meeting with government officials about it and explaining. So this is uh, my team, my, me and my team. They're somewhere here meeting with um, uh, DILG officials, whom we discovered. Uh, you know, needed an introduction to Twitter. Uh, they they told us, well, you know, I think there are only three people in our department uh, who uses Twitter, uh, in, and that includes uh, Secretary Robredo. Uh, and Secretary Robredo, of course, was still alive at the time. Uh, but you know, we had a conversation also with Secretary Robredo uh, back in back in back in uh, early uh, August, and he gave a an, ins an instruction to his um, to his people in DILG. Look, this is this seems to be a, a sound idea, uh, you know. And right now, it's kind of uh, chaos. We're being criticized for not making early announcements and for not and b for favoritism because you can't call media all at the same time. So if you call ABS before GMA, then parang magtatampo kami. If they call if they call us first before ABS, then tampuhan talaga yan. So, but if you use a, if you use Twitter, then everybody has the same chance, diba? So I think uh, well, and then the next slide, please. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So basically, uh, the ILG and DepEd talked, and um, starting today, this was uh, August 15, 2012. Uh, the government will be using the unified hashtag "Walang Pasok" for class suspension announcements. Uh, okay. And then a story by Rappler about the unified hashtag. Next, please. And then the next time there was a. Uh, and then they started using it right away. DepEd started using it right away. Uh, no, walang pasok. So basically, if you know how Twitter works, all you need to do is search walang pasok and you just look at whether the account is verified and then you can already start retweeting or using that information for official purposes. Uh, the government okay, uh, other, the government uh, started uh, maintaining its own list and we, we just basically retweeted all of this. Uh, Manolo is here, and he, he's a very he's an advocate of doing this as well. Um, and then here you have um, you know, uh, media, and then uh, local local government uh, local government unit. Next, please. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we're 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 doing that kind of collaborative effort with DepEd and and, lo and local government uh, units in in, uh, in times of emergencies. But when the emergency is over, I think you know we, I think social media media in general has. As an obligation to you know just say hey look it's uh, it's time to breathe now we can relax um, and uh, uh, and we have the ability to uh, not just report uh, bad news breaking news but uh, lift morale uh, next please uh, so we also post stuff like this a dog that didn't want to be rescued and finally our most viral photo of all time. Uh, this set a record for us. <laughs> uh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of shares by the time uh, the Habagat flood was over. We just found this. We just found this on. We just found this on uh, the bride's uh, Facebook page. Called her up, said, uh, "Sure, you can use it," and uh, uh, just gave us a lot of traffic. But I think it also made uh, a lot of people feel better.